An orphan seeks a happier life by marrying someone who loves her. But this is only the beginning of the hardships and turmoil brought on by her beautiful face. Jolene grew up in foster homes where the fathers took advantage of her and the mothers openly hated her. Therefore, she marries Mickey, a young man who loves her. The ceremony ends, and Mickey's Uncle Phil warmly welcomes Jolene as a part of the family, while Aunt Kay prefers to be more civil in her greetings. After their wedding, the husband tells her they'll stay with his aunt and uncle for a few years years before getting their house. The wife responds that she expected to have their own home in a few months, so Mickey promises this to keep his beloved happy. Moments later, they arrive at their shared residence, where the wedding reception is held. Phil kisses the young wife's cheeks and pulls his nephew aside to reveal that he'll be working the next day, despite having just gotten married. Then, Kay brings Jolene to the newlyweds' room, hinting that this is temporary and that she should help with the chores. The young woman happily proclaims she is willing to help, but unintentionally offends Kay when she calls her aunt. Because of this, the older woman demands she calls her by her first name. The following day, Mickey sends Jolene to school, though she worries that Kay seems to dislike her. The husband dismisses her concern as he thinks genuinely about his family. Later, Jolene's art teacher notices that the student isn't happy with her work. She advises her to draw things she's seen, but the youngster says she wants to forget most of it. Still, the teacher resumes encouraging her, seeing the woman's talent as an artist. Jolene promises to try as she fixes her sketch of a family eating together. During dinner, Dinner, the man praised the young wife's cooking, but Kay feels the opposite. Annoyed, she hands over her food to her husband, who politely declines to make room for dessert. Jolene realizes she didn't prepare desserts, so the aunt reminds her to do so next time. The older woman loses her appetite, so Jolene volunteers to make her a sandwich. However, she accidentally breaks the ketchup bottle, agitating Kay further. Later in their room, the young wife expresses her disappointment toward her cooking and tells Mickey that it may be better for Kay to cook for herself. The husband dismisses her idea and presents her with an advanced birthday gift for tomorrow. Jolene excitedly wears the nightgown but realizes it's too big and old-fashioned. Still, Mickey is over the moon, wishing his mom had the chance to meet his wife. This makes Jolene wonder how her mother-in-law passed away, but her husband suddenly sobs and refuses to speak about it. His wife initiates intimacy to console him, but Jolene slowly realizes Mickey's shortcomings as he has no ambition. She begins settling with how things are, forgetting they need a place of their own. The following day, Phil barges into the room to greet Jolene happy birthday, disregarding the couple's privacy. Kay sharply stares at the younger woman upon discovering she's naked under the sheets, so she greets her coldly and directs her to clean the kitchen. Jolene makes the most out of her cleaning task, so she plays music while dancing and scrubbing the floor, unaware that Phil is watching her maliciously. Driven by temptation, he suddenly carries her and beds her that day. Since then, the two secretly meet daily and drown in their passion for each other. Time passes, and Jolene admits to feeling terrible for Mickey, but Phil directs her attention by promising they can live together and build their own house. However, the teenager thinks that Phil doesn't love her, though she declares she'll wait for him. The older man tells her they must also be careful for Kay and Mickey's sake. One day, Mickey and Kay arrive home earlier, and the aunt hears some giggles. The nephew dismisses it as television, but the older woman senses something wrong. She follows the noise and catches Phil and Jolene together. Enraged, Kay drags her out of the house, leaving her crying and ashamed while shouting echoes. The betrayed Mickey soon exits the house in tears. Jolene attempts to apologize, but he ignores his crying wife while walking to his truck. He drives to the bridge where he jumps to his death. Protective Services eventually places Jolene in a motel while deliberating her case. The psychologist assigned to her recommends she be sent to a juvenile facility until she becomes an adult. In the facility, she meets the head nurse Mrs. Ames and the attendant Cindy. The young woman asks if she can have some drawing materials, and they allow her but she is given pills despite the declining them. Days later, she realizes that the dreadful place isn't really for regaining a healthy mental state. After a couple of months, she is called to court to prove that she is a minor, concluding that Phil took advantage of her. She tries to call him as she passes by him, but the man ignores her. On her way back to the facility, Cindy consoles her and declares that she's not at fault since she was the victim. 
Afterward, Jolene opens up to Cindy about how the place is killing her on the inside, but the attendant almost kisses her. The older woman then pulls away, and after she leaves, Jolene resumes her sketch of Mickey and kisses it goodnight. Jolene becomes more unsettled in the facility when a patient hurts herself with a broken mirror one day. As the days pass, Cindy pays more attention to her, unaware that she's not taking her pills. Soon, the attendant makes a move on her, which escalates to intimacy, despite Jolene feeling indifferent about it. The following day, Mrs. Ames hands her watercolors, saying she owes them to Cindy as she informed her about this art therapy. Since mirrors were banned after the last incident, the other patients offer to pay Jolene to paint them, thus giving her a way to earn. One evening, Jolene asks Cindy to let her out, claiming that she wants to be with her. The attendant tells her she has a plan as long as the young woman promises to stay with her for forever. Jolene promises this, so Cindy sneaks her out in her car one night. In her residence the next day, the attendant does Jolene's makeup just like she always wanted and hurries to return to work, prepared for the questions about the missing patient. She excitedly tells her girlfriend that they'll spend time together when she returns. Jolene asks to go to the beach, but Cindy is determined to lock her in, not even allowing her to look out the window since she plans to wait until it's okay for their relationship to be exposed. Because of this, Jolene escapes as soon as Cindy is away, and she feels free for the first time. After her money from her painting commission runs out, she hitches rides from people and exchanges herself for some money. Soon she finds a better job as a diner crew and receives plenty of tips due to her looks. Her colleague Kendra comments on how weird one of their customers is, but Jolene finds him cute. Knowing that the man just has a crush on Jolene, Kendra volunteers to get his order to keep her away from him. However, the customer, Coco, insists on having Jolene. When she approaches, the man introduces himself. He proudly plays a song he composed for Jolene and invites her on a date. During the date, the young woman finds him adorable since he makes her laugh, which she hasn't done for a long time. She discovers that Coco is a tattoo artist and owns his shop. Finding arts in common, Coco asks her to be his apprentice, and she agrees. Jolene bids goodbye to Kendra as she's moving in with a man, but her former colleague comments that she can get hurt since they've only known each other for two weeks. The woman argues that Coco believes in her. Soon, Jolene learns tattooing easily, and her customers are impressed. Eventually, Coco proposes to her, which she initially declines. Still, the man convinces her, pointing out their similarities as orphans and artists. Despite not knowing who the man is, Jolene agrees to marry him. Afterward, the wedding is held, and the husband adores his new wife. However, Jolene begins imagining him as Mickey. One day, Kendra visits just as Coco heads out. Upon discovering that the wife has no idea where he's going, she suggests following him. They find him entering a motel room, making Kendra think that he's dealing with illegal substances. Betrayed, Jolene confronts her new husband after his clients leave, so he defends that his side business keeps their shop running. Soon, however, a woman named Marin storms into the shop looking for Coco while carrying an infant. She introduces herself as his wife and realizes that Jolene is clueless when she asks if she is the ex-wife. The husband arrives, and Marin passes the baby to Jolene as she welcomes the man with slaps. The second wife hands him his baby as the man finds a way out of the mess. He escorts Marin and the baby outside, then asks Jolene to wait as he drives them away leaving the second wife seething. She trashes the place and packs her bags, but finds a bag of unauthorized substances. Driven by revenge, she scatters it on the table, places her ring on it, and calls the police before leaving. After being betrayed, Jolene feels like a child again and wonders about her parents. With no other choice, she travels to Vegas and works as a dancer. Sal, an affluent customer, books a table to speak with her, and the manager introduces her as Baby. He praises the woman's craft, and she tells him her real name. Soon, Sal regularly visits her, and she finds him a gentleman. He's also well-respected in the community, so she's showered with care and luxury. Sal brings her to his sky palace, where Jolene sees a prized painting that the owner thinks represents the dancer. Jolene also sees his family pictures, and he explains that his kids have lives of their own and his wife is long gone. Infatuated with her, he offers her to live with him and hands her a credit card without a limit, promising her a queen's life with no strings attached. Despite knowing that not everything in the story is true, Jolene accepts his offer. 
For days, Sal stays true to his words, giving the world to the woman, and she tells him she loves him. One day, they join dinner with Sal's business partners, but he insists on not discussing work. This disappoints his colleagues as they wish to discuss important changes, so Sal asserts that he's been doing business the same way for 25 years, and it'll stay that way. Sal becomes busy and stressed in the next few days, but he lets Jolene do everything she wants, allowing her to practice painting. She presents a new work to Sal, and he expresses how he loves her, promising that she'll always be taken care of even when he's gone. On another night, they have dinner at a restaurant where Jolene sees Sal's business partner. Seeing them with sketchy looking men, Sal decides not to approach them, claiming that he wants to focus on Jolene. One early morning, Sal receives a distressing call, so he wakes Jolene up, telling her to wait for him downstairs. He stares at her longingly before Jolene heads out. While waiting, the woman eventually hears an explosion, so she hurries to their suite and finds the lifeless Sal on the floor. His killers are still in the suite, forcing the frightened woman to flee. Eventually, she ends up in Tulsa, where she works as a receptionist living a peaceful life. Peggy, her colleague, comments on why she's in a hurry, so she explains she has a catering gig. In the event, Brad, the son of the house's owner, notices her and begins hitting on her. Jolene remains professional while dismissing him. The following day, she receives a massive bouquet from Brad, and Peggy informs her that his family owns the building and half of Tulsa. Jolene remains uninterested, but Peggy advises her not to decline him if she wants to keep the job. With no choice, Jolene accepts the invitation, and she's led to a fine dining restaurant that evening. This fails to impress her, especially when Brad shows his eccentricity. Like before, she gets used to his personality and begins dating him. Not long after, Brad proposes to her, and she declines, asserting that they don't know anything about each other. However, he insists that he doesn't care about her past, so Jolene eventually finds herself before the altar on their wedding day. Her groom's parents remain absent, though Brad doesn't seem to mind. On their wedding night, Brad sees the tattoo that Coco gave her, making it a painful experience for her. Her parents-in-law remain uncaring during their time together, so Jolene tells Brad that if they have a family, she'll love her child no matter what. When he agrees, she confesses that she's pregnant, and Brad is overjoyed. Months pass, and the husband suddenly wakes her up in the middle of the night to ask about her previous relationships. They argue about it since he claimed that he didn't care about her past even when she insisted on telling him. Upon realizing that she's been with many men, Brad walks away and the wife follows him. As she tries to console him, he hits her and leaves. The following day, they go to the church with the husband sobbing for forgiveness for what he's done because his wife hurt him. Jolene forgives him and she soon gives birth to their son. Finally, she finds contentment with being a mother. However, as she devotes her time to her son, Brad becomes more agitated, especially when his parents contact him. One day, she sees her father-in-law handing papers to her husband. Afterward, he barges into the room and beats her up after discovering her past. The nanny gasps in shock upon seeing her on the floor. Jolene cleans herself up and takes her son to the women's shelter. Unfortunately, no lawyer takes her case since the Bentons have all the power, money, and evidence against her, which is her dirty past. To make things worse, the police soon arrive at the women's shelter and arrest her for kidnapping her own son. She looks for another lawyer, but he can't defend her due to the circumstances, even though she has apparent marks of being battered. The judge gives her son sole custody to the Bentons. Hopeless, she accepts her situation and brokenheartedly kisses her son goodbye as she imagines how he'll grow up with no mother. She flies to Los Angeles and finds a job as an illustrator for a small comic book company. She channels her previous experiences into the graphic novels they produce, entitled Jolene. One day, she heads out after work and walks into the Hollywood district, recalling comments that she should be an actress since she looks younger than 25. Jolene contemplates whether to do it since people say childhood dreams can come true. A mother and a son pass by her, and the child stares at her just as she looks gently at him, recalling her boy. She imagines that after being a successful actress, she'll return to Tulsa in her limousine, and her son will open the door to greet his movie star mother with a warm embrace. However, Jolene returns to reality, turning away from the boy in the streets as she wipes her tears away. Instead, she fixes up a smile on her face, focusing on what the future might hold for her rather than living in the fantasy she wishes to happen. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.